reduce the potential for human error as much as possible. So what are our ultimate goals when we think about capturing an herbarium specimen? We have some critical things that have to be present and if they're not, it has to be reshot. So we need the color checker. For archival purposes, when someone looks at that image 20 years down the road, they need to know what these values stand for. And if that, colors, if that color checker is not in there, they have no way of knowing whether or not that image has changed over time. They need the scale bar. As all of you who are researchers know, if an image doesn't have a scale bar, you really have no way of knowing how big something is. So you need that. We need the specimen to be fully in frame. I don't want any corner of the specimen sticking out. This is an archive of our specimens, our collection. It's as priceless as, as the collections themselves, or maybe dearly so, some may argue. But you want to capture the best picture that you possibly can. You want all the text legible and clear you need to be able to read it, especially if you're trying to capture data from the labels. And it must have an ID number. You don't have to have a barcode number if you're not interested in investing in barcodes. Maybe you have an accessioning number system. Something that gives it a unique identity separate from every other in your collection. And then after the fact, once we've imaged the specimen, we stamp ours with a little stamp that's about that big with image. So anyone who looks at that specimen af afterward knows it's been photographed somewhere and they're not going to photograph it again. Sometimes um, when you're taking pictures and you're taking pictures in autofocus, your camera lens may go up and down and up and down and up and down and not focus on anything. And that has to do with these points. These are autofocus points. So the camera reads, looks for um, areas of contrast in these points. And cameras can have varying numbers of autofocus points. Some have just a couple, some have them all the way around, some you can change to have it be only right there. Wherever you have your autofocus points set, if they're not hitting any area of contrast, they're going to tell you it's a focus failure. And in order to get around that, you can do a couple of things. One, you can go to live view, switch from autofocus to manual focus, focus on the label, take your picture. We found when photographing grasses, which have a lot of areas of the sheet not filled or a lot of vertical lines that somehow tend to trip up our autofocus sensor, we decided it saved us a lot of time and headache and batches of images that needed to be reshot by taping the lens. So we put it in manual focus mode focus the lens on the label so the label was crisp. We go to live view, we zoom in and magnify so I can see the letters on that label so clearly. Then I tape it with gaffer tape. I know you don't want to risk getting your camera lens all sticky with gaffer tape, but gaffer tape doesn't leave a sticky residue if you buy the good kind. So you tape the lens so that it doesn't rotate and go out of focus. And that prevents this. And again, that that uh, forces the importance of checking every 15 to 20 pictures to make sure they're still in focus. So your, your um, focal length is dependent upon your lens. And the depth of field is related to the diameter of the aperture, right? So those f-stop values between f8 and f11 with an ISO setting of 100 and a shutter speed of 1 over 60 tend to yield the best results for exposure with a camera that is a full sensor and 50 millimeter lens. So if you have a different size lens and your specimen is positioned at a different um, distance from your lens, you'll have to tweak those a little bit. So you'll have to find what is the perfect f-stop relative to your, if you keep the shutter speed around 1 over 50, 1 over 60, play with your shutter, or play with your aperture, all the while looking at that white square on your color checker, because you need that to be 243, whatever is your, um, whatever are your values for f-stop and shutter speed. The thing about an herbarium specimen is, the depth of field is pretty shallow. For insects, it's different, especially when you're working with macro. Macro lenses um, have less of a depth of field than do regular 
um, lenses, which is part of what allows it to get such a one-to-one -one ratio of object to object on the sensor size. Um, maybe, maybe Christiana will talk more about what you would need with the photographing insects when she gives her talk. So I think now is probably a good time to break and then she'll talk about photographing your um, insect specimens and, and spirit collections. So before we do that, someone has a question? Moses. <coughs> You're so good to wait. <laughs> Okay, um, your, your presentation is really herbarium based. Yes, it okay. is. Okay, but my, my worry now is if you are in the field, for example, I don't work in, in any herbarium. Yes. If you are in the field mm -hmm. and you, you take a picture, you will definitely have something like, like a pen for a scale. Yep. But you, don't, you, you won't have a color chart. Yes, you can. You can't have a color chart. And, and the description of, of that particular specimen that you are uh, shooting mm -hmm. is in your field book. Mm -hmm. So in that case, how, how, how do we actually make that picture more in a bigger view to, to people in the public? Because they feel, they feel, yeah, 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 they feel information, the level information is not on the picture. Uh huh. And the color chart is not there. So you is that picture still useful? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I recommend you carry around a little scale bar with you. You can find paper, you can print one out, take one with you to take a picture of your specimen with the scale bar. As far as the colors go, you can find cheap, in fact, professional photographers take those color checkers. Mm -hmm. They have the, mo the model hold that color checker in the first picture mm -hmm. so they can measure the values for every other picture after that in that shooting session. Okay. So I suggest if you can't do that, then try, I guess you'd have to go based on your memory, um, mm -hmm. what is white. So you want to find a neutral, something of neutral color mm -hmm. in the picture. Yeah. As far as the information about the image that's relative to where you were mm -hmm. and what it is, mm -hmm. that you can embed within the image later during post-processing. Okay. And that will stay with the image wherever it goes. Okay. It may not be visible to everyone. They would have to look in the image file information to see it. Only okay. some software programs can reveal it. Okay. But it will stay with it. Then now, how, uh, I mean, my, now my, my last worry is to incorporate the field, the field your field uh, notebook now, yeah. the description of that plant with the pictures. I'll show you. You can do it. You can't do it in that exact moment. What you can do in that exact moment mm -hmm. is write down the image number okay. in your field book. Uh, yes. And the date. You'll have the date already, but write down the, the image, image number. number yes. Your camera will capture, okay. yeah. will capture a series of um, numbers and you can probably depending on the complexity of your camera mm -hmm. tell it how you want to name the images mm -hmm. so you can include the the date in the image file name if you like and that will eliminate any question as to when a specimen was taken and then in your field book record the sequential camera the, the sequential number, number. Yeah. yeah so this That's will start at the very beginning of my camera usage as 0001 unless I tell it otherwise mm -hmm. and then every picture after that will go up in order. Okay. So if you record it in your field book, then when you go to image or to process your images in your catalog, mm -hmm. you can embed all of the information about that collection event and that specific collection into the image. Okay. And that will go into the archive with the image and it will go onto the web with the image. Okay. Now what it won't do is go <coughs> into a database. Okay you have to import it into a database. Okay. But you can easily do that with Lightroom also. Okay. 